Good day. Today we're going to be doing a lesson on RSI, so that's rapid sequence intubation. I'm going to be talking through each and every step. I've already kind of set them up like I would like to. We'll probably make some adjustments in a moment. However, this is kind of what we're wanting. So let's just start at the top. How do we RSI? Why do we RSI? All that sort of thing. So we RSI to take control of a patient's airway to make sure that we get the best chance at first attempt. So we have drugs that are going to paralyze. We have drugs that are going to sedate. And we have drugs that are going to deal with pain, so your analgesia. The first P is always going to be prepare. So we need to prepare us as in terms of the team. We need to prepare the patient in terms of the positioning and the drugs and the equipment and the IV lines. And then we need to also prepare our equipment. So we need to make sure that all our kit is set up and ready. So let's just go through me being prepared. Am I prepared and is my team prepared? So there's obviously just me in this room, so I will be doing this by myself, but I will talk to you through what the process is and how that can be done. So first of all, we need to talk about the team. So we're gonna prep the team. I am gonna be doing the main intubation. Then I will discuss how I'm gonna do this. So I will go and try and intubate. If the SATs drop to 94% while I'm trying to intubate, then I'm gonna get my partner to tell me, and we are going to try an eye gel to try and, try and oxygenate a ventilator with an eye gel. If the eye gel doesn't work, we're going to go for a BVM with a mask. So we, we can pull out, get double CE grip on the BVM and we can ventilate, see if we can get chest rise. If we can't get chest rise, we then go front of neck access, so a, um, a surgical crack. That's pretty much me and my team. We know what we're going to do. I can be managing the airway and my partner can also be doing the drugs. That comes to preparation. Let's prepare the patient. So what do we want for the patient? How do we prepare for this? So. We want him to be positioned correctly. So if we can, in the semi-fowlers, so head up a little bit, this is gonna allow for good ventilation. This is going to also allow for a really good view. What this is also gonna do is bring him to the right height, so he's also at a good viewpoint for me to intubate. What else we want is we're gonna have our pads on, because if he goes into cardiac arrest, we can shock him really quickly. We have our four lead on, we have our SATs probe on. You should have two IV lines up. I've just got one here for the demonstration. Your monitors are all attached. You have capnography, you have SATS probes, you have your BB cuff on. What I would recommend is that you get your blood pressure cuff and you make it cycle by itself automatically every three minutes. What that's gonna do is it's gonna continue to redo your blood pressure all the time, which then gives you a quicker up-to-date reading. And also, whenever you print out all of trends, it has a better trend of blood pressure. So now that we've got that kit ready, so we're busy prepping him. The other P is for pre-oxygenation. So we're going to do no DSAT. So what that means is that we're gonna put nasal prongs on him. So this is all part of the pre-oxygenation and denitrogenation part. What that means is that we are wanting to make sure that all of the air in his lungs is just pure oxygen. We wanna get rid of the nitrogen, which means that we want him to only be breathing 100% oxygen all the time. So we have nasal prongs at 15 liters per minute. We have a non-rebreather at 15 liters per minute. We are assuming that this is a non-trauma patient they are GCS3, and so we are needing to RSI them, and so that's what we're gonna do. There's no like major blood loss, they're not hypertensive, just a straightforward RSI. So we've got nasal cannulas on at 15 liters per minute. These can be capnography nasal prongs and then normal nasal prongs, so that we have a capnography waveform and then a non-rebreather non at 15. Then we leave this for at least three minutes, not allowing him to take a breath of just normal air, only O2. So we are pre-oxygenating because during the phase where we are making him paralyzed, he'll be apneic, not breathing, and we want any of the oxygen that is in his lungs to be able to diffuse easily and make sure that he's oxygenated. So we've got the right position, the right kit, now all of our equipment and medication. So we have the sedation, the analgesia, and the paralytic. So the ketamine, we're gonna go at two milligrams per kilogram. So that means that we're gonna give him 160 milligrams ketamine. The fentanyl, we're going to go with three micrograms per kilogram, so that's 8, 16, 24, so that's 240 micrograms. And then we're going to go with the rock, which is just 100 rock. The other things that I have drawn up here, which are really ideal, is a 0 0.5 milligrams of adrenaline. That's a one in 1,000 solution for anaphylaxis. So if he goes into anaphylaxis, we're not trying to find this and draw this up. It's already drawn up. We can give it IM. Ready, drawn up, and labeled. These medications should all be labeled. And if you know which syringes you put which medications, it also really helps you. And then we have a push dose presser. So you are giving five to 10 micrograms per push. The way you do that is that if you have a 200 ml bag, you put two amps, 
if you have a 500 mil bag, you put five amps, and then if you draw out 10 mils of that or five mils of that, that is your push dose presser. We've also set up our ventilator. Unfortunately, we don't have a ventilator with us today, but you would then have your vent set up if you have an infusion pump. If you need to have an infusion pump, if you're concerned about his blood pressure, you could prep some phenylephrine, um, depending on what the case is and why you're needing it. So we have our primary source of intubation, which is gonna be our direct video laryngoscopy, which we have tested our blade. We have a spare blade in case our first blade breaks. So that is our primary uh, method of intubation. We have our tube and we have our bougie. So this is exactly how we're gonna go. Every RSI, you should be using a bougie. We have our stuff to tie down the tube, which is really gonna just make my life a whole lot easier. While I'm busy prepping this, this is busy oxygenating. So we have our bougie, our bougie and our tube is gonna go on the, on, on the right-hand side, or we can just put it on the chest for now. We're going to give our suction. I'll go through a mnemonic in a moment to make sure I have everything. That's all applied. Our BVM is here with our capnography. Capnography, BVM. Then we have our eye gel and our, and our mask. So get a eye gel and get your mask for the BVM. Don't go running around trying to find the mask because you're not able to ventilate. We have our secondary device, so we have an eye gel, it's the right size and it's lubed ready. And we have a scalpel. So we're gonna go scalpel finger bougie. We're going to also, once we've done this, so this is obviously inflated, this is all on 50 meters per minute. Can I feel it? If you feel like this is gonna be a really risky RSI and you're really not sure, you can take a pen and mark the cricoid membrane. This allows you to be really sure that you know exactly where you're going. So scalpel finger bougie. And we have all of our drugs here lined up ready. Stethoscope around the neck. Our secondary blade. We have more than one size tube, so one size smaller, one size bigger. That's all here in the drawers. In terms of our fluids, so we don't necessarily need to give a fluid bolus, but it's a really good idea to have at least one bag of fluid up, if not at least two bags of fluid. Our BB cup is not on the same arm as the SATS probe or the IV line. Really, really good idea. Patient is positioned, so let's just go through um, soap me, so that's um, S is for our, our suction is ready and checked. Our O is for oxygen, our oxygen is on and applied. Our A is for airway, so we have all of our intubation stuff. We have our primary, we have our rescue, we have our BVM, we have our eye gel and our crike ready, all right? So that's suction, oxygen, airway. Uh, P is for your positioning, are we positioned right? So face should be flat with the roof. The ear above the sternal notch, patient in semi foul is going to give us the best chance possible. Um, uh, me, the medication and equipment. So our medication is ready. We have our paralytic, our, our induction, our analgesia. We have our IM adrenaline for anaphylaxis, and we have our push dose presser, which is adrenaline. So we have prepared our team, we have prepared our patient, and we have prepared our equipment. Okay, so now we, are, we have already pre oxygenated our patient for three minutes. Our heart rate is 116, saturation is 100%, our ETCO2 is 42, and he's breathing at a rate of 12. So we're happy with his ventilation. We, we aren't concerned about a breathing problem, so we're not too concerned about that. Let's start the drug administration process. So now that we have pre-oxygenated for at least three minutes, saturation is 100%, heart rate is 116, uh, capnography is 42, and he's breathing at a rate of 15. So that's exactly what we're wanting. So we have our ketamine, our fentanyl, and our rock. So we're going to now be looking at our patient. Are we happy that we have everything ready? Am I ready? Is the patient ready? Is the equipment ready? These are all the being really prepared is the key to this process. So now I'm going to start with the fentanyl. So we can give it a check. Cool. Fentanyl's in. Ketamine's in. And our rock's in. Cool. So now we're gonna start a one minute timer and we're just going to wait. We're not going to take off the mask. We're not going to remove anything. We're waiting for the drugs to work. So all these drugs take time. The rock will take about a minute to work. The way you can assess this is you can just feel the jaw. We're not giving sucks, so you're not gonna see any fasciculations. So what's gonna happen is after the one minute, I'm going to just check. I'm going to be watching his capnography. Cool, so we've got 15 seconds to go. Is he apneic? Are we checking his jaw? Cool, his jaw feels quite flaccid. We've got about five seconds. His breathing is slowing down. Okay, great. So his breathing has now stopped, which means he's now apneic. I'm going to remove 
the non-rebreather, this we're picking up, and remember the suction is right here. So we're leaving that on. My partner's gonna tell me when we are going to hit size of 94, because that's fine. That's absolutely perfect. Because this is size seven, so we have a syringe here. Cool. Obviously, I, I deal with more than one person. Cool, bougie out. There's no rush. He's so oxygenated that he's not going to desaturate. You have so much time. So now I'm going to leave this here, and because there's only one of me, obviously I'm going to, do I hear anything <coughs> of the stomach? No, that's good. I have a bag on the left. I'm seeing chest rise already. I'm seeing capnography is doing something. On the right. Cool, we have good air entry bilaterally. Great. So I'm pretty comfortable that that is in the right place. Um, at this point, my partner can then take over the bagging for me while I sort out this tube. If I was not able to get the tube in quick enough, I would have then gone for a just a, um, a mask and double CE grip to get some ventilations. If that's not working, I go for eye gel, or my partner can go eye gel and I can go surgical cry. Okay, great. So tube is 21 at the teeth, which is exactly what we want. Our vital signs are really looking good. Our blood pressure is still 131 over 83. Capnography is 42. Saturation never dropped below 100. Um, and our heart rate is 116. So he's now paralyzed with the rock, which has lost for about half an hour, 45 minutes. He is also then having the ketamine and the fentanyl. So we're gonna have to now mm. think about um, top-up sedation or post-intubation sedation. So if you have still got ketamine remaining and you have fentanyl remaining or you can draw up, doesn't have any problems with the intubation. Now we're gonna get them onto the vent. We can just use normal vent settings. We're not necessarily gonna cover vent settings in this video. Um, we didn't have any complications and that is the process of your RSI.